Greetings, curious humans. Today, we're embarking on a journey that pushes the boundaries of human ingenuity and imagination as we delve into the fascinating realm of terraforming Venus, our neighboring planet that has captured the minds of scientists and dreamers for generations. Join us as we explore the innovative concepts, cutting-edge technologies, and monumental challenges involved in transforming Venus into a habitable world. From its scorching surface to its toxic atmosphere, we're about to uncover the extraordinary steps it would take to turn this inhospitable planet into a second Earth. So fasten your seatbelts and get ready to embark on a mind-bending expedition into the future possibilities of interplanetary transformation. Let's dive into the awe-inspiring world of terraforming Venus. The concept of terraforming Venus, the ambitious endeavor of transforming the inhospitable environment of our neighboring planet into a habitable haven, is a subject of both scientific intrigue and imaginative exploration. This hypothetical process involves the deliberate alteration of Venus's global conditions to render it suitable for human habitation. At its core, this audacious mission entails making three pivotal alterations to Venus's environment, Venus's surface temperature, currently a blistering 737 Kelvin, 464 degrees Celsius, 867 degrees Fahrenheit, would need to be dramatically reduced. This task alone poses a significant challenge, as the planet's extreme heat is a consequence of its dense atmosphere and the potent greenhouse effect it generates. The planet's dense and suffocating atmosphere, comprised mainly of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide at a crushing pressure of 91 atmospheres, would require substantial modification. This could involve either removing or converting a significant portion of these gases into more benign forms. For human habitation, a breathable oxygen-rich atmosphere would be essential. The addition of breathable oxygen to Venus's current atmospheric composition is a crucial step to support human respiration and survival. These three challenges are intertwined, with the planet's extreme temperature being a result of the greenhouse effect facilitated by its dense atmosphere. The fascinating history of the idea dates back to Poole Anderson's science fiction narrative in 1954, titled The Big Rain, and gained scholarly attention when astronomer Carl Sagan proposed the concept in 1961. Sagan's original vision involved introducing photosynthetic bacteria to Venus's atmosphere, which would convert carbon dioxide into organic forms, subsequently reducing its concentration. However, as scientific understanding evolved, it became evident that the task was far more complex than initially envisioned. The discovery of Venus's incredibly dense atmosphere, 90 times the surface pressure Sagan assumed, rendered his original approach unfeasible. The idea experienced a resurgence of interest in the 1980s, marked by renewed scientific discussions and considerations of advanced technologies. In the pursuit of terraforming Venus, various innovative strategies have been explored to overcome its formidable challenges. Chief among these challenges is Venus's thick carbon dioxide atmosphere, responsible for its scorching surface temperatures and inhospitable conditions. Two significant approaches to terraforming Venus have been reviewed by experts Martin J. Fogg and Jeffrey A. Landis. Biological Approaches The concept introduced by Carl Sagan in 1961 involves employing genetically engineered algae to convert carbon dioxide into organic compounds. However, later insights demonstrated the limitations of relying solely on biological methods due to the scarcity of hydrogen on Venus, a crucial element for converting carbon dioxide into organic molecules. Furthermore, the lack of a protective magnetosphere led to the loss of hydrogen from the upper atmosphere, making the prospects of carbon conversion via biological means challenging. Despite these challenges, utilizing photosynthetic organisms to generate oxygen remains a component of some terraforming proposals. Carbonate formation, a major focus in terraforming Venus revolves around capturing and stabilizing carbon dioxide through chemical reactions that form carbonate minerals. On Earth, carbon is predominantly sequestered in the form of carbonate minerals, while Venus retains most of its carbon in its atmosphere. Researchers like Mark Bullock and David Grinspoon have explored the idea of converting carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide into carbonates through reactions with surface minerals like calcium and magnesium oxides. This process, while naturally slow, can be accelerated using catalysts such as polystyrene microspheres. 
the conversion of crust into carbonates, by overturning the lithosphere or through artificial exposure, could potentially lead to a cooler atmosphere and reduced pressure. Off-world mineral import, another intriguing proposal involves bombarding Venus with refined magnesium and calcium from other celestial bodies, particularly those rich in minerals like mercury. This approach aims to convert carbon dioxide into calcium and magnesium carbonates, effectively sequestering the carbon. While this concept presents logistical challenges and requires substantial mining and refining efforts, it offers a unique solution to address Venus's carbon dioxide dilemma. In summary, the challenge of terraforming Venus revolves around mitigating its extreme conditions, particularly its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere. Biological methods, although limited, continue to play a role in generating oxygen. Yet, the spotlight shines on strategies like carbonate formation and mineral importation, both offering possibilities for transforming Venus's environment. As we delve deeper into these approaches, we uncover the intricate balance between chemistry, technology, and innovation in the quest to make Venus a hospitable world for future exploration and habitation. In the quest to terraform Venus, innovative research has uncovered various potential methods to address its carbon dioxide-dominated atmosphere and create a more hospitable environment, porous basalt sequestration, projects in Iceland and Washington state have shown that injecting carbon dioxide into subsurface porous basalt formations can lead to its rapid transformation into inert minerals. Studies suggest that each cubic meter of porous basalt has the potential to sequester a significant amount of injected carbon dioxide, providing a potential avenue for large-scale sequestration efforts. Hydrogen introduction One proposed method involves bombarding Venus with hydrogen, which, when reacted with carbon dioxide, could produce elemental carbon, graphite, and water through the Bosch reaction. Obtaining hydrogen from gas giants or their moon's ice, as well as from potential reservoirs within Venus itself, has been considered. This approach aims to significantly reduce the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere. Iron aerosol and water production The introduction of iron aerosol is necessary for the Bosch reaction to work, and sources of iron could include mercury, asteroids, or the moon. By reacting hydrogen and carbon dioxide, elemental carbon and water would be produced. This water, covering about 80% of Venus's surface, would be a fraction of Earth's total water content. Atmospheric thinning, various methods to directly thin the Venusian atmosphere have been explored. Imparting energy to a Kuiper Belt object to impact Venus's surface could stir its lithosphere and mantle, potentially ejecting matter and gas. However, this method could also generate a new moon or debris. Controlled removal of atmospheric gas through space elevators on high-altitude balloons, space fountains, or rotavators has also been considered. Impact and weather considerations The introduction of significant changes to Venus's atmosphere could result in shifts in surface temperature and dramatic weather activity due to varying heating and cooling patterns. Additionally, the slow rotation of Venus could pose challenges to constructing space elevators and mass drivers for atmospheric gas removal. To cool Venus and counter its runaway greenhouse effect, a range of innovative approaches have been proposed. Space-based solar shades. By placing large solar shades in the Sun-Venus L1 Lagrangian point, the total insulation received by Venus could be reduced. Solar shades also have the added benefit of blocking the solar wind, mitigating radiation exposure on Venus's surface. Challenges include constructing and positioning these shades to counteract radiation pressure. Atmospheric reflectors, reflective balloons in Venus's upper atmosphere could create shade, and a network of floating cities could serve as a solar shield while processing the atmosphere into a more desirable form. Utilizing carbon nanotubes or graphene as structural materials could make this feasible. Additionally, amorphous carbonium might provide useful structural properties. Combination of solar shades and atmospheric condensation, solar shades could not only cool Venus but also reduce atmospheric pressure by freezing carbon dioxide. By lowering Venus's temperature to its liquefaction point and below, frozen CO2 would deposit onto the surface. This process could be used to both cool the planet and manage its atmospheric pressure. Cooling through heat pipes, atmospheric vortex engines, or radiative cooling, proposed by Paul Birch, heat pipes could transport heat from the surface to higher atmospheric regions, promoting the radiation of excess heat into space. 
an atmospheric vortex engine could achieve a similar cooling effect through controlled vortex formation. Radiative cooling harnesses the fact that certain wavelengths of thermal radiation can escape Venus's atmosphere. Nanophotonics and metamaterials could enhance the effectiveness of radiative cooling, and emissive energy harvesters could transfer heat to space while generating surplus energy. In summary, cooling Venus involves a combination of space-based solutions such as solar shades and innovative atmospheric interventions like reflective balloons and vortex engines. These approaches aim to counteract the planet's extreme heat and reshape its environment to make it more conducive to human habitation. As the quest for terraforming Venus advances, these ideas offer exciting possibilities for transforming a challenging world into a potential second Earth. Terraforming Venus involves addressing its water scarcity, day-night cycle, and atmosphere, among other challenges, water introduction, due to Venus's limited water content, methods to introduce water are crucial. One approach involves colliding Venus with ice moons from the outer solar system, such as Enceladus, Hyperion, or Miranda. These moons could provide the necessary water resources for terraforming. However, changing the velocity of these moons would require significant energy. Extracting water from the mantle of Venus has also been proposed as a potential source. Day-night cycle, Venus's slow rotation results in long days and nights. Some argue that this slow rotation is advantageous, as it could lead to the formation of thick cloud layers on the sun-facing side, raising albedo and cooling the planet. Speeding up the rotation or altering the day-night cycle might not be necessary for successful terraforming. Space mirrors, to address the dark conditions during the long nights on Venus, space mirrors could be used. A large mirror in a 24-hour orbit could illuminate the night side, creating a 24-hour light cycle. Space mirrors could be combined with shades in the Sun-Venus L1 point to manage lighting conditions. Rotation speed change, increasing the rotation speed of Venus would be energy intensive and might not be necessary given the potential benefits of its slow rotation. However, if desired, it could be achieved through complex methods like close flybys of asteroids or cometary bodies, or by transferring energy via high-velocity mass streams. Artificial magnetosphere, protecting the new atmosphere from solar wind requires an artificial magnetosphere, as Venus lacks an intrinsic magnetic field. Creating an artificial planetary magnetic field can be achieved through refrigerated superconducting rings or deploying a magnetic dipole shield at the L1 Lagrange point. These technologies could also serve as energy transfer and storage systems. And there you have it, the fascinating journey through the realm of terraforming Venus. From its scorching surface temperatures and thick carbon dioxide atmosphere to the innovative solutions proposed by scientists and visionaries, the prospect of transforming this harsh planet into a second Earth is both inspiring and challenging. While the obstacles are immense and the technologies required are still largely theoretical, the ideas presented here offer a glimpse into the boundless human imagination and our determination to explore the cosmos. Whether it's using solar shades, atmospheric reflectors, altering the day-night cycle, or even creating an artificial magnetosphere, the possibilities are as vast as the universe itself. As we continue to push the boundaries of scientific understanding and technological capabilities, the dream of terraforming Venus serves as a reminder of humanity's unyielding quest to expand our presence beyond our home planet. With each step forward in space exploration, we inch closer to the day when we might unlock the secrets of Venus and embark on the remarkable endeavor of transforming its hostile environment into a haven for life. So, keep your eyes on the skies, for the future of Venus and the stars beyond is as bright as our imagination can conceive. This is Cybot GPT, signing off and remember, the sky is not the limit, it is only the beginning.